Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green deck titled Clothus Control, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, as we're playing with Clothus, a god of destiny, the 3-mana 4-5 legendary enchantment creature god from Theros. It's indestructible, but it only turns into a creature if our devotion to red and green is at least 7. And then at the beginning of our pre-combat main phase, we can exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a land card, we can add either red or green mana to our mana pool, otherwise we gain 2 life and Clothus deals 2 damage to each opponent. So it's this powerful enchantment that just sits in play, deals damage to the opponent, gains life, and is waiting for us to reach enough devotion before it can start attacking. And our deck is definitely built around Clothus, as we have a lot of ways to generate red and green devotion, with cards like Fire Emancipation adding triple devotion, and also synergizing very nicely with Clothus damage ability. And then we also have ways to destroy poison creatures to put those in the graveyard, between all our removal spells like Frostbite, Blizzard Brawl, and Royal Eruption. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. This is also a snow deck, as you'll notice, with plenty of snow lands and snow synergies from Kaldheim. At one mana we've got the full play set of Frostbite, a one mana snow instant, dealing two damage to target creature or planeswalker, but if we control three or more snow permanents, it deals three damage instead. And then we've got two copies of Blizzard Brawl as another snow removal spell, choosing target creature we control and target creature we don't control. And then if we have three or more snow permanents, the creature we control gets plus one plus so and gains indestructible until end of turn, and then those two creatures fight. Then at 2 mana we've got more snow cards with Sculptor of Winter, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two Elf Rogue that can tap to untap target snow land, so it essentially ramps us for 1. Then we've got the full playset of Royal Eruption, a 2 mana sorcery dealing 3 damage to any target, can also kick it for 5 additional mana dealing 5 damage instead. This is a nice removal spell early on, but it can also help us close out the game, especially once we play Fire Emancipation that triples all the damage, as we'll be able to deal 15 damage out of nowhere. Then we've got 4 copies of Magmatic Channeler. This card may seem a little bit out of place, since we don't have that many instants and sorceries in this deck, so it's unlikely to get the plus 3 plus 1 bonus, but it's still a 2 mana creature that survives opposing copies of Stomp from Bonecrusher Giant at 3 toughness, and then it can tap and discard a card in order to exile the top 2 cards of our library and choose one of them, and we can play that card this turn, so it can help us hit our land drops, maybe get out of a mana screw situation if we're stuck on only red, and it can also get rid of additional copies of Clothus God of Destiny, which we usually won't have any uses for otherwise. Then we've got our four copies of Clothus, and four copies of Bonecrusher Giant can first use the Stomp Adventure as another removal spell, and then play the 4-3 creature afterwards, which will also increase our devotion. And then at four mana, the full play set of Spirit of the Elder Guard. This is just a very powerful card in any snow deck, as an 0-4 creature that when it enters a battlefield, we can search our library for a snow land card, reveal it and put it into our hand. And we even have two copies of Faceless Haven as a snow land we can search up with Spirit of the Elder Guard, so it can potentially get an extra threat. And it can also fix our mana if we just need a third red source for Fire Emancipation, for instance. And then the Spirit of the Elder Guard gets plus one plus so for each other snow permanent we control. So this includes all our snow lands, but it also includes other snow creatures. So Spirit can get a ton of power, which is very useful for playing out our Great Hench, which gets an X mana discount, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, then taps for double green and two life. And whenever a non-token creature enters a battlefield under our control, we get a plus one plus one counter on it, and we also get to draw a card. So this is another very powerful card draw engine in the deck. Two copies of Questing Beast as or Planeswalker Slayer, a 4-4 with Vigilance, Death Touch and Haste, and a whole host of other abilities that you can read on your own time. And then we also have two copies of Fire Emancipation, as we alluded to, saying if a source we control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple than damage to that permanent or player instead. So we can easily one-hit KO someone if we attack with a Spirit of the Elder Guard, but as we mentioned, also very nice with cards like Royal Eruption, and it also triples the damage we deal with Clothus, God of Destiny. So just a combination of Clothus plus Fire Emancipation can win the game in a few turns. Then going over the mana base, we've got a lot of snow lands to enable our various snow synergies, with eight snow-covered mountains, eight snow-covered forests, then two copies of Highland Forest as both a snow mountain and forest, but it comes into play tapped. Four copies of Fabled Passage to search up our various snow lands, also puts a land in a graveyard for Clothus. And then uh, two copies of Faceless Haven, as we mentioned, another nice win condition. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play, facing Allures of the Dream Den deck with an acceptable hand. Got a bit of interaction, 
some threats, and Clothis could also be great against a Lurus deck. Turn one Swamp into Archfiend's Vessel. For now, probably okay to play Channeler. And get Clothis in play as soon as possible. Probably want to make sure we can exile the vessel if we kill it with our stomp so they can turn it into a 5-5 demon by reanimating it. Expert can have a forest and another forest. Alright, so cloth this time. And the next turn in our upkeep we could decide to stomp so we can still exile whatever creature we kill with Clothus. Do have to watch out for village rights since then our bone crusher would fizzle since the target is gone. Well, opponent's gonna see two more snow covered forests. And they're going to Mogus' favor, experts, so they can hit us for three. So now it's also just tempting to kill the expert and then exile the Mogus' favor. Then, do we Royal Eruption, or do we save it for later? Probably save it, can always get rid of it with Channeler, but don't feel like doing it this turn. Could be bad if they have another Expert, but so be it. Opponent attacks, so it does imply a Call of the Death Dweller might be incoming. So, we can just block Expert, if they have a dead weight, they can finish off Channeler, which would not be ideal, so I think we just take two. Fourth land untapped. It's gonna be Serrated Scorpion. Maybe a Lurus to the hand. Yep. Alright. Spirit, excellent draw. And could just get another Faceless Haven, could get Highland Forest and play it here or keep it in hand. I'm guessing we can probably use the extra mana still. And we'll pass. And then we've got removal for Lurus. So actively have to avoid Vessel ending up in the graveyard. So now maybe I don't mind blocking Scorpion with Channeler and an Expert with Spirit of the Elder Guard. Although, if they get back experts, if they have another land and make me discard Royal Eruption, I'll be sad. So maybe the play is the reverse block, let them get back Scorpion, but then if that's their play, Lurus into Scorpion, we can Royal Eruption Lurus, and then we'll be able to exile it to turn after. Although we still suspect a Call of the Death Dweller, so they'll be able to get Lurus back with Call of the Death Dweller. Or I can just take the one. Sure. Yeah, I need to find instant speed removal pretty much. So I might be able to find it with Channeler. And it's gonna be Eidolon into Deadweight on Channeler then. Nope, just Lurus. So I could, you know, activate Channeler now in the hopes of finding Frostbite or another Stomp. And then we can exile Lurus, which would be a very big game. If we miss, we probably still hit something powerful we can cast, so I think it's worth it. Uh, double Sculpture, not the best. And a channel for the turn. So we'll exile 
A royal eruption, I think. Does mean shrinking Chandler if we make mana instead. I go up to six, which isn't really enough for anything significant. So sure. Cloth is almost a creature here. One devotion short. Opponent gets pretty aggressive since they have lures that can get back whatever dies here. Although Eidlon, I can block safely. And then I guess we'll just take three. Runs out another Eidolon, and we suspect our last card is a Call of the Death Dweller. So I think we're going for the same trick, Channeler in our upkeep. In the hopes of finding instant speed removal for Lurus. Which we did not. Now I can maybe get a little bit more aggressive with my Faceless Haven. I guess I could attack with Haven, Bone Crusher, and Spirit, and just leave Sculptor back. Or I could attack with everyone. And if they double block Sculptor, they're taking a lot of damage. My opponent goes for the trade since they can Death Dweller back Lurus. But then if we find Sorcery Speed Removal, we can finally finish him off. And then Lurus gets back Eidolon. Questing Beast is nice too. But I might want to go digging with Channeler here to try and kill Lurus. Finds a Spirit of the Elder Guard. Now I could play Questing Beast, which would also enable Clothis. Would that give us lethal? So play Questing Beast. Bonus got three blockers. The only one that blocks Questing Beast is Lurus. Still have three attackers. Yeah, they would have to block with Lurus. Otherwise they're at eight and every attacker has at least four power. So that seems like a good attack. So I guess we'll just take the land then. Bonus at 7. And next turn we can maybe exile Lurus with our Clothis. If they have another Call of the Death Dweller, we could be in trouble. Opponent passes. Lurus is gone. And we can Frostbite. Idle on attack with all. And next turn we should be able to close out the game. Alright, GG's. We couldn't quite find instant speed removal to kill Lurus initially and exile him, but we got there eventually. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. No green mana means we get a mulligan this one. This is better. And then... I think we get rid of Channeler, just keep double Sculptor for ramp. And then hope to draw into some of our heavy hitters.
opponent with a turn one swamp. Do we fetch forest or mountain? Let's go with mountain. Next turn we can run out Clothus. Heartless Sanct deals with our Sculptor of Winter. Alright, opponent four colors. So we could run out Sculptor in the hopes of running out Spirit to turn after, or we can start leveraging Clothus, which I also kind of like. And we can't forget about Fabled Passage in our own graveyard, which can also make mana to run out Spirit. And that can grab a Faceless Haven. As an extra threat. Spirit dies. So this might be a Sanctum deck. Nope, there's Kaya. Pretty nice answer for Clothus, all things considered. So this turn, probably Stomp. And then either play the Bonecrusher Giants or play Sculptor. At this point, probably just play the Bonecrusher. Still have our Faceless Haven. And then we're hoping to draw another Clothus, I guess would be nice. Fiery Emancipation, if it sticks around, could also deal a lot of damage. Currently don't have double green, so we won't be able to play Questing Beast or Great Henge if we draw those until we play Sculptor first. Opponent keeps ramping. So not exactly sure what their game plan is. But for now, kind of like attacking with Haven and then running out Sculptor of Winter and not overextend with another Bone Crusher instead. So we are technically presenting lethal. But we still have some leftovers. Aha, uh -huh, Koma. The Cosmo Serpents. Yeah, that one's gonna be hard to beat. I can deal five damage to it before they get a Serpent, which is one short. So what's the hope here? If I activate Haven... I could kill the Serpents before attackers. They would probably make Koma indestructible or they tap down my Bone Crusher Giants. If they just tap down Bone Crusher, I can still finish off Koma if they block with it. If they make Koma indestructible, then I can still activate Faceless Haven, attack with all. They block, they take six, and then I can deal two more to them, down to two. And then we gotta hope to top deck a burn spell, which would be lethal. I guess that's worth the shots. Alternatively, I can activate Haven, attack with all. But then they would probably sacrifice the Serpents before damage. If they let damage happen, I can finish off Coma. So maybe I can afford to attack here. with everyone. Opponent might be fearing something like Embercleave, perhaps. Right, tap sound the Haven. Can flow the mana, not that it matters. And then we'll attack with Hall. And if they block, we can finish off Coma. All right, that worked out. Let's 
gonna be chromatic orrery. And then we can activate Haven. So if they have nothing, they would be dead. Alright, sweet. Despite losing Clothus along the way, Faceless Haven proving to be incredibly valuable here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Do need a third land if we want to cast a turn three Spirit of the Elder Guard. But that's one of the better starts our deck is capable of. Turn three Spirit into turn four Great Henge. Facing Speaker of the Heavens, so some sort of mono white aggro life gain deck. And a Sword of the Realms. So I could decide to Royal Eruption. Or next turn I can just play Spirit, which can block Speaker. Seems better. And if they don't equip, we can maybe sneak in a Blizzard Brawl at some point. Alright, Maul the Skyclaves instead. Now it becomes more tempting to use removal before they get to 27. So I guess we'll have to Royal Eruption. And hit for two. And then next turn we can Spirit plus Brawl. Lurus, but no way to get back. Speaker just yet. And then probably just get a mountain. And next turn we can play a nice cheap Great Henge. And we're not too far from Emancipation. And our opponent scoops it up. So yeah, in fact we could have already played Emancipation next turn if we wanted to. Play our Snowlands, untap Snow Mountain with Sculptor of Winter, so we have 6 mana including triple red. This would go up to 6 power, so it could attack for 18 damage, which isn't too shabby. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Can fetch up Forests, turn 2 Sculptor, turn 3 Spirit maybe. Let's see what the opponent is up to. Turn one, Palanca Predation tapped as a land. So if Sculptor dies, we could still run out a 4 3 Bone Crusher and forego the adventure. But if Sculptor survives, we can just run out Spirits to keep hitting our land drops. It's gonna be a Dream Devourer, that's okay. And this wants to get probably just the Forests. So we've got some pressure going. Next turn we can increase the pressure even more with a Questing Beast, although then we might be overextending into an Extinction Event. Opponent foretells with a Dream Devourer, although they don't have any attack into Spirits. So this might be some sort of Turgrid deck. Clothus is a nice pickup. So... I could just attack with Faceless Haven if we want to play around Extinction Event here, or we can drop Clothus. And then just attack with Spirits Sculptor. If they block Sculptor, we can Bone Crusher finish off Dream Devourer. Yeah, that seems acceptable. Which probably would have been a reason to maybe not uh, play the forest and play the mountain, so we could have potentially stomped plus play channeler. Opponent chum blocks. 
So that might also imply a sweeper incoming. It's gonna be a village right to sacrifice Dream Devourer. Alright, so we'll just deal two. Play Clothus. And then next turn we can follow up with Questing Beast. It's gonna be Turgrid. Alright. Bonans at 16. So we don't want to sack Fabled Passage while Turgrid's in play. So I guess now is a good window for Questing Beasts. And then I'll happily trade for the opponents. Opponents at six, so we're pretty close to just burning them out with Clothus and Bonecrusher Giant. It's gonna be Inscription making me discard two. So... I guess it works. We'll discard Channeler and Fable Passage. And our opponent gains control of both. Channeler was also going to be awkward with Turgrid in play, as discarding cards gives the opponent those cards. And then in response to the Disciple, We'll stomp. Bone Crusher puts them to four, Clothus puts them to two, and we might even have a lethal attack with our Faceless Haven. also turn Clothus into a creature here. Alright, opponent's got to cling to dust to draw a card. No creatures in graveyards to gain three instead. And uh, yeah, we can exile the cling to dusts. Opponent's at two, and we'll let Clothus cross the finish line here. Can even untap our Faceless Haven for maximum damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Sculptor likes being in our opening hands today, and yeah, it's a pretty good two drop if we can ramp into a turn three Spirit of the Elder Guard, for instance. We've got our Clothes already, a removal spell to put something in the graveyard. So overall, pretty solid hand. Turn one Swamp into Sanitarium Skeleton. Well, Clothus can potentially clean up the skeleton once it's in the graveyard. Opponent takes three from their Agadim into a Skyclave Shade. So, do we still want a Spirit, or do we take a different approach with Clothus and some removal? I think I still like getting our threat in play, and then next turn we can start cleaning up the graveyard. And Haven seems fine. Eliminates Sculptor of Winter, which shrinks down spirits, but we can still block the shade. Questing Beast, pretty good too. Yeah, I think we just Questing Beast and kind of ignore the opponent's creatures for now. They can chum block a spirit with skeleton, still take four. And then next turn we'll deploy Clothus, which is also pretty close to turning into a creature. Alright, opponent is red black. And it's gonna be a Croxa. Probably say goodbye to Magmatic Channeler.
and another sanitarium skeleton. Alrighty, well, Clothus is pretty good against the opponent's deck. So many graveyard synergies. So, as much as I want to get another Spirit of the Elder Guard in play, I think it's time for Clothus now. And then we can attack. And keep up Frostbite at instant speed as well. Opponent's not gonna like seeing Clothus. Oh, voice Strider, that's fine. Good target for Frostbites. Opponent's got the Goat, which we can remove with Blizzard Brawl, and then their deaths between our attack and Clothus dealing two damage to them. Get rid of Crocs, I guess. Also have our Faceless Haven, not that it matters. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Get to fetch, play turn two channeler. And then this might be a game where we get to cast Emancipation with Clothus in play. Can also use Clothus to ramp into Emancipation by exiling our Fable Passage. And then a second Clothus we can exile with Channeler if it survives. Facing Blood Sky Berserker, which is gonna start picking up plus one counters and menace. So opponent's mono black, presumably, if they're playing Faceless Haven. Alright, so time for Clothus, and then probably not going to use Channeler this turn, just keep it on defense. Although I expect both Berserkers to grow next turn. Demonic Embrace to give it flying. Alright, at least they're not double spelling. So we're just taking four, and next turn I can try and find an answer. So, in my upkeep, discard Clothus. See what we pick up. Blizzard Brawl will do. And then draw, exile Clothus for turn. And we can even stomp as well here. So we get to kill both creatures. Fetch up another mountain, so we have triple red for emancipation in case something happens to Clothus. And then we're just gonna take out both creatures. And we can hold Stomp to cast in response to Demonic Embrace, but there's a risk that they have an instant that would put two counters on it. So the safest is probably just to main phase kill the Berserker. And then next turn I can exile my Fabled Passage, get to six mana, cast Emancipation, which is going to be great with Clothas in play. Right, Call of the Death Waller gets back Berserker, now with Menace and Death Touch. And Mars Grasp kills Channeler. That's fair. So we'll make some mana. And now Clothus deals 6 damage each turn and Questing Beast 12. Questing Beast is also going to wake up Clothus since we'll get to 7 Devotion. So that's another 12 damage potentially. Although we'd have to be careful, because if the opponent has two more copies of Myers Grasp and we enable Clothus with seven devotion, it does become an indestructible creature. And then Myers Grasp is one of the few ways to potentially get rid of it by decreasing its toughness. 
Mogus' favor plus Faisal Saven turns into creatures, so we're taking nine. But yeah, our opponent's dead to Questing Beast here. Can exile Demonic Embrace. Questing Beast wakes up Clothus. And our opponent takes 24 damage. So yeah, that's the power of Fiery Emancipation in this deck, adding triple devotion for Clothus, also helping us deal 6 damage each turn, and then a great way to close out the game with a big Questing Beast, Spirit of the Elder Guard, or even a Royal Eruption to the face for 15 damage. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.